Jeff, first day out there, uh, how, how did the guys look walking off the field? Oh, we were good. Yeah. I mean, I'll coach another 35 years if we can get that kind of cloud coverage and breeze. That was pretty nice. I thought the compost will never hear me say another word about the, uh, the indoor or whatever we call it. It, it was really nice. The uh, kids were fine. Flew around, but it's hard not to be good when you're in helmets and it's cloudy and, and breezy. You have a lot of veteran guys with you, but also a lot of fresh faces. Yeah. Does it feel like kind of a return to the norm? Is there something different about today? Uh, just more normal, more typical. You know, we've had um, two of our four years where it seemed like everybody was returning and there wasn't much change at all. And then this is our fifth team, so this would be three years of, you know, two-thirds of your roster returning and probably a third flip, which is pretty normal. Do you operate practices, especially the first practice, different in those years compared to the years where there's more newness? Um, but because we play football so much now, I mean, you, you still had 15 practices with them in the spring. You had 12 with them this summer, and you know it's install. You know, used to this was day one install. Well, now it's like day one point e install because it's about the fifth time you've done the first install. So you still just kind of follow the same script even though they've done it before? Are there, are there like more advanced things you can get into or ways you can approach it? It's always about your players. I mean, you're not going to ask this. It's what those guys could do. So we've got a different team. So we've got guys with different skill sets. And players in different positions can do different things. So that's, that's the biggest change is, um, is where the emphasis is. It's going to be the same plays. There's just going to be certain ones of them called more than there has been in the years before. And they'll be less plays called of those because of just your talent changes with your each kid. How did uh, Owen and Eddie Lee look today? Uh, you know, we had four teams going. I was kind of everywhere, so I probably wouldn't be able to give you a great. Um, I, I charted every scale that I was with, but I was only with, um, you know, half the groups because we were split. And I charted everyone in one-on-one, -on -one, so but I didn't really watch each one of them individually, honestly. I'll, I'll do that on video today. It's, when I'm live like that, I'm just, I'm really being a head coach and I'm trying to orchestrate practice. And uh, it's the great thing about Alex Nicasio and his great crew of Ali and Josh, you know, they get everything filmed. And you got wide angle, tight angle, end zone, uh, whatever those things are called that fly over your head and look down on you, you've got it all. Wanted to ask you about the running backs. It, it's a big group as compared to Years pass. I mean, looks like there's a lot of talent in that room. How do you guys, I guess, balance the workload with all of those guys? Is just spreading them out over the four teams for now? Yeah, it's it's easy now because yeah. we got we're going four D, so you need everybody and nobody's injured yet. Yeah. But pads get issued out, you know, Friday, uh, shell, so they'll start getting bumps and bruises, and it'll all work itself out. But luckily, you know, the top three guys are all back from last year. We have a lot of high hope for, you know, Brandon. He's been here for a while, and he's a good football player. And then we brought in, you know, a little flavor from Beast Texas. Uh, so we're, we're excited about those guys. And we brought in two young guys. So we've got five veterans and two young guys in the room. So that's a, that's a, that's a high number. Uh, getting Frankie and Will late as true freshmen, obviously. And... Uh, we're excited about all, all seven of those guys. You mentioned yesterday the more quiet leadership style of this group. Was there anybody who was kind of more vocal today or lighting the fire under everybody to get things started? No, it was pretty much what we thought it'd be. Just, just those older guys, their turn. You know, Ken Robinson, Jamal Ligon, Oscar Cardenas, those kind of fellows, Kavorian. How's the, how's the health of the guys, like, on this first day? It seemed like there was only a few guys that now. Yeah, we had a, you know, we had a calf. You know, flared up out there. We had a little bit, a little bit of of crampiness and throwing up a little bit, but nothing terrible. What are your kind of own goals for this first week of fall camp now that y'all are a month out from the season? You just really want to get your depth uh, tall. You want to make sure you get a lot of guys tall. You're going to need them all before the year's up because uh, eventually we'll be – no more fours. It'll be just one, twos, and threes, and then it'll go down to ones and twos and scout team. And so right now it's just to get get stuff taught and and, and hold them to a standard, uh, so we can get off to a fast start. You know, I've said it a million times before. You know, that was a long September last year. Uh, 
one and three. So that was that was a, a really tough September, and it makes me quit listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> We're talking to Devin McEwen today. How has his game grown from one year to the next as he kind of enters the second season in the program? Um, you know, Devin's been a pro since he's been here. Him and Amador are just different. They're they're eighty five year old men captured in eighteen, nineteen year old bodies. They're very mature, wise beyond their years. Anybody can coach them Kuhn or Navador. Jeff, that linebacker group, I was watching them doing some drills. It, it looks a lot different with, with the new additions there. Can you just kind of speak to what those new guys bring to the table? Yeah, we're just deep. Man, we're deep, you know. A Brevin, you know, from Marshall, Texas, known him forever. And then Blackshire, you know, from a great program in Dallas as well. Two guys that have played a lot of football. They're older, and uh, we feel good about our young guys that we, you know, we haven't ever had, you know, LBJ uh, get healthy. He's always been injured, but we think he's going to really come on as well. So we're we're excited about that room. We really are. And we've got some mainstays that have been around for a while, still in there, but we're excited about that room. Brandon Brown's coming back after wearing uh, the number two jersey for you guys last year. What does he mean to the defense and to this team overall? He's a lot like Amador McEwen. He's an 85-year-old man trapped in a 22-year-old body. He's an old soul, just a wonderful human, really believes in the program, a really good football player. He's been a great nose guard for us. And I'm excited for Brandon. Those, those are the guys, man, that we've been through so many battles together, and uh, he's obviously a single-digit guy. So you're, you're really – you're fond of all your players, but those guys that are, you know, it's their last time around. In this new world of college football, every semester they're choosing you. Back in the old days, when they chose you on signing day, you know, that was your guy. Now they get to re-choose you each semester. So it kind of makes it, you know, even more special, the guys you're coaching, because I know all of them pretty much. All my good players have been poached tried to take him out of here and they all stayed and that makes me feel good and he's one of those guys. When you have not just the experience level but the personality types that you talk about with some of those guys, does it allow you and the other coaches to focus more on different areas with some guys who maybe don't need as much kind of oversight or attention day to day? Oh yeah, I mean just like you at your work, I'm sure there's some guys that are drama queens and there's some guys that just do their freaking job. Which one do you enjoy more? Uh, if the guys that just do their job, it allows you to give your attention to the drama queens and Kings, whatever that might look like. You gotta be careful nowadays. Uh, what you say? Well, and on the high note, yeah, yeah. Boy, yeah. Is, is, is drama off record here? Is drama clean bad? Uh, 